Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel Maths and Matrix. Today in this video, I am going to explain to you about the Euclid's division lemma which is the very first topic from the chapter Real Numbers of the Grade 10 Mathematics. With this video, I am starting up with the Grade 10 content. So, the, my approach would be like I would be explaining to you the topic and pertaining to that topic, the corresponding exercise that followed in the NCRT textbooks of your grade 10 mathematics all right so we are starting up with the grade 10 mathematics this is the very first topic of the chapter real numbers let's begin with this particular topic but before i continue here i would like to add one point that this topic is not only of the grade 10 mathematics but it is also the part of the syllabus of the you know the serious written examination or the territorial army written examination there they have provided the mathematics content which is of elementary level which comprised of this topic as also the part of it and based on this finding the LCM SCF questions and also finding the zero uh, uh, finding the once place to be zero kind of questions are really expected so you have to be good at this topic so let's begin with this point then the Euclid's division lemma what is an Euclid's division lemma might some of you already know because in schooling time we used to do the division of two numbers right you remember suppose a teacher gave you on the board like divide 25 by 3 so what you used to basically do that time yes you used to divide the 25 by 3 right right you used to divide 25 by 3 as taking 25 as dividend and 3 as divisor so you know that uh, 3 8 are it goes right 3 8 are 24 and the remainder is 1 not only this your teacher used to ask the this division into one of the format can you recall that format yes you used to supposed to write this format dividend is equals to what divisor into quotient plus remainder recall now what is the dividend in this case dividend is 25 divisor is yes 3 and quotient is 8 remainder is 1 remember and this form is nothing but now we are introduced to a lemma that is called the Euclid's division lemma right so can you all now see that given two positive integers a and b there exist unique integers q and r satisfying this equation what is this equation a is equals to bq plus r which is nothing but from our schooling time like i meant middle grade school or primary grades so used to you know write dividend is equals to divisor into quotient plus remainder this is the same format and what we had noted that this remainder has certain stage of values it has the minimum value that it can take zero because remainder can be zero or it can be just below the divisor it cannot be beyond divisor can it be no because we have the divisor three so remainder has to be this remainder has to be less than the divisor only right that is what the condition is provided so can you now connect that given two positive integers any two positive integers we are in uh, we are in position to write down this equation okay if i give you randomly say two numbers say i i told you 215 and 105 so what do you do whom do you take divisor whom do you take quotient uh, sorry. whom do you take dividend and whom do you take divisor you would take divisor to be this 105 and dividend to be 215 okay so here in this case a will be 215 and b will be 105 so you have to find out what is q and what is r how do you find that with the help of division so hence you have to understand that the euclid division lemma is all about for given two positive integers to set up this kind of equation and it is possible for any two given positive integers all right so very much clear this particular criteria that the remainder can be minimum 0 and it will be above 0 and always less than the divisor note this point. So this is all about the lemma very much clear. So now what do we have is we have a one important point hereafter to learn about that this lemma gives rise to usage of you know uh, uh, algorithm a kind of algorithm to follow to de determine SCF of two numbers. Like here you can have a look that what I meant to say Euclid's division algorithm. This is nothing but a kind of process that we supposed to follow which would yield us the SCF of the particular two numbers. And this SCF we are finding by applying you know what the Euclid's division lemma. We apply we do a set of uh, uh, certain uh, steps 
and then we get the SCF of two numbers. So this becomes, this process becomes what? This process is called as Euclid's division algorithm. So do not confuse with the algorithm and the lemma. Lemma is a statement that you have which is a kind of equation satisfied by any two numbers a and b which are positive integers we are supposing here right that a is equals to bq plus r that's a uh, equation followed by any two positive integer but uh, pertaining to that equation when we do certain steps right we follow certain steps if, or in other words if i say if we repeatedly carry out that process of division we come to a conclusion where we can conclude that scf is the SCF, we can conclude the SCF of given two numbers, right? So that process that we are following, that process is called as algorithm and it is named as Euclid's division algorithm because repeatedly we are applying the Euclid's division lemma to determine the SCF of two numbers. Now your uh, big question mark comes then what all I am saying you about, right? What is this all like? So we would just uh, understand this with the help of an example. Have a look. So I have an example here. I have taken two uh, numbers right 125 and 205 and here what's the question for us what is the SCF find the SCF of the numbers 125 and 205 so we are trying to find the SCF of two numbers here we are trying to use Euclid's division algorithm which is a process of finding the SCF using repeatedly the Euclid's division lemma so what is the Euclid's division lemma it's all about a is equals to bq plus r where remainder can be minimum 0, it can be above 0 but below divisor. This is what the process that we supposed to follow, right, to find the SCF. Now how? Let's begin with the very first step. So first of all you have to choose what is A and what is B in the given two numbers. A you can always choose to be the bigger one provided the given two. So 205 you can choose it as A and 125 choose it as B which is divisor. So first I will write 205 is equals to divisor 125 so 125 twoza you know it will go beyond 205 so once i have to take what would be the remainder can you see see actually here i'm performing division here i would write it for you i'm performing the division i'm dividing 205 by 125 125 ones are 125 so what remainder i would get you can check i would get the remainder 80 so this here i have to write 80 now i am finding scf so what is my motive should be scf would be the number such that the remainder turns out to be 0. Do I get here the remainder 0? R equal to 0? No. So what do I do? I would carry forward this process. So what do I do on the next step is that I would carry this 125 as the dividend on the next line and this 80 as the divisor. And now divide 125 by 80. So again 80 ones are because 80 twos are 160, right? So what's the remainder in this case? 125 minus 80 you do. You will get the remainder 45. Check. Right? Still, again, you ask the question here, is is it R equal to 0? No. No, right? So, again, I have to do the process. So, this time what happens is that I have to take 80 as the dividend and 45 as the divisor, right? So, 80 as the dividend and 45 as the divisor. 45 twos are is 90. So, 45 ones I have to take and remains 35. Again, the same question should raise that remainder is 0? No. Remainder is 0? No. Right, so begin the process once again. 45 as the dividend, 35 as the divisor. So 35 ones again, so 10 is the remainder. Again, the same process, right? Take the next 35 as the dividend, 10 as the 10 as what the divisor. So 10 threes are I can take now this time. So 5 is the remainder. Once again, 10 as the dividend, 5 as the divisor, 5 ones are 5 twos are remainder is 0. So you got it right till here the same. But here we got the remainder 0. So yes, we stop. We stop here. And what we declare? We declare that in this process of division, in this process of division, the last divisor, which yield the remainder as 0, turns out to be the SCF. So this is what the SCF, we declare that it is 5. So this is what the process of finding the SCF of the two numbers using Euclid's division lemma. So this is what I followed here is Euclid's division algorithm to determine the SCF. It's just a series of division till you get the remainder. In the series what is happening is that the every new divisor you are taking up to the dividend and remainder as a divisor till you get the remainder 0. Very much clear. So this was all about the Euclid's division lemma and its algorithm.
let's note something here that the Euclid's division algorithm which we particularly stated in the grade 10 as the only for positive integers but believe students this can be extended for all the integers except the zero divisor has to be not zero for all the positive negative integers we can extend this but for the grade 10 syllabus we only have the content for the positive integers this division algorithm we are considering for positive integers so we are restricting our knowledge till the uh, division lemma for the given to positive integers all right and apart from this point that we noted that yes it can it can be applicable to negative integers as well we can also note here that the euclid's division lemma the algorithm has several applications relating to finding the properties of numbers and now students the serious aspirants and the ta aspirants they have the benefit here that being known to the euclid's division lemma they can apply that knowledge to answer the questions on the properties of numbers that can be appeared in the serious mathematics paper and territorial army mathematics paper so what i meant here i have one example for you let's look out one example show that every positive even integer is of the form either 2q and that every positive odd integer is of the form 2q plus 1 where q is some integer in real life the integers we know there are positive negative but we also classify some in integers we can also classify integers as positive integers negative integers apart from that as even integer odd integers now the format that even integers follow and the odd integer follow can be easily set forth by with the help of the euclid's lemma that every even positive integer can be taken of the form 2q and every odd positive integer can be taken taken as 2q plus 1 how this is possible see for that we know that given a and b positive integers given a and b positive integers we can always write a is equals to bq plus r where 0 less than equals to r less than b so say a b any positive integer a b any positive integer right so now what we want to show that that integer can be written as either 2q form or 2q plus 1 form right so for that i can choose i can choose the divisor b to be 2 right so that i can write a as 2q plus r so if i chosen my divisor i can now tell that remainder can be 0 or it can be below 2 now what it can be can you say what it can be the remainder can be 0 1 less than 2 is 1 only 0 or 1 means this implies us that a can be either 2q or a can be either 2q plus 1 i started my hypothesis to be an integer a but as we want the form 2q and 2q plus 1 i set the divisor to be 2 and i i came to the conclusion that that integer a can be either taken the form 2q or it can be taken the form 2q plus 1 now you know that what is even even number definition any even number is multiple of 2 so this is what even any even plus 1 2q is an even number if you add even number plus 1 if you add even number plus 1 what do you get odd so this is the odd definition so you hence shown that every positive integer can have either two form 2q 2q plus 1 if it is 2q it will be even if it is 2q plus 1 it will be odd clear one more i have an example which uh, you know which is the application of the euclid's division lemma to set forth the properties of integers show that any positive odd integer understand any positive odd integer is of the form 4q plus 1 or 4q plus 3 where q is some integer it is also possible that any odd integer can be written of the form 4q plus 1 or 4q plus 3. Ye bhi aap samaj lo. Ki odd integers ko hum ye form bhi lik sakte 4q plus 1 or 4q plus 3. How to begin with this? Now here you want to uh, talk about the odd integer. Okay, you want to talk about the odd integer. And uh, we know that. If a is an integer, it can take the form bq plus r where 0 less than equal to r less than b. We know this. Now, we want to show the form of the number to be 
four q plus one and four q plus three. So what do I do? Do is here I would choose. I would choose the divisor b to be four, so that I can write a is equals to four q plus r. So now I am in position to write the remainder that it can take the value zero above zero and below four. Means what values it can take? It can take zero, one, two. Right? Let's write down zero, one, two, three. That's it. So now here I would set up the equations. It can be like a equal to four q, a equal to four q plus one. A equal to four q plus two. A is equals to four q plus three. That's it. Now here you uh, see, have a close look at these numbers. This forms a equal to four q. Four q is actually two times of two q. So shall I say it is even, right? Now next it should be odd because even get added with one will be odd. But if you add two to even, it will be even. So this is even. Now this is here plus three means it's kind plus two plus one. 4q is already even. Plus 2 you do it's even, but plus 1 you do it will become odd. Now, what is the assumption in the question? You want the odd integers. So out of these choices, one, two, three, four choices. Which choice you shall choose? You shall choose the second one, right? And the fourth one. And you shown in the process that the if it is the positive integer, which is odd integer, then yes, it can also have the form 4q plus 1. 4q plus 3 by choosing the divisor b to be 4. All right, students. So here just we completed the very first topic of the real number chapter, the Euclid's division lemma. Hopefully you understood the statement as well as the application to certain level, to certain basic level to prove the properties of positive integers. You have to stay tuned to my channel and also. You can like and share the video link if you find the content useful with the needy one and do subscribe to my channel so that you can keep getting such video because in the coming days I'll be coming up now with the exercises as I already told you that we would also covering the fully solved exercises of the NCRT grade 10 mathematics syllabus. Meanwhile, you can also follow me on my social uh, media platforms like Twitter, telegram and instagram you can find these channel links in the description below do like and share the session and stay tuned to maths and matrix